Tom Cosm here introducing another patch for you today called MIDI Note to Any Clip Slot Trigger. What this does is allow you to use any MIDI note that is sent or played in this MIDI track that this patch is on and it will trigger any session view MIDI clip that you desire. So how does it work? Let's turn one of these on and I'm going to pick a track, track one. I'm going to choose a MIDI note, let's say C1, and then I'm going to pick a MIDI clip slot using this uh, number box here. Remembering that the first MIDI clip slot is actually treated as zero, number zero. So it goes zero, one, two, three, etc. So let's go back here and let's pick clip slot number two and let's go ahead, insert a MIDI clip, go down to C1, throw a note down and hit play and you'll see it's gone ahead and triggered that clip slot for us, which is excellent. But let's do it a few more times. Let's make a D, uh, an E, an F, and we will make a G. I will show you why this is cool in a minute, don't you worry. So back here, I'm gonna turn on five more of these guys. Uh, we're gonna click list, 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 just so we get a list of all the tracks. We'll go track two, track three, track four, and we'll do track four again for that one. Uh, we'll go D1, and we'll go E1, we did a major scale, didn't we? Yep, and G1. And we'll just pick some random things here. We'll go three, four, five, and six, like so. And now what should happen is when I play this, you see we get this pattern. So we can basi basically use MIDI clips to create patterns of clip, clip slots that are getting triggered in live. Now why is this cool? Okay, I'll show you one here. Uh, where are we? Let's get this here. Don't say this might take a second to load. So it's it's cool because when you use it with dummy clips. So remembering dummy clips are audio tracks that have effects on them, but the audio is routed to somewhere else. So I've got a simple square wave playing here. Let's just play it without the beat. Pretty full on square wave, just a plain square wave, but the square wave is routed to the chorus channel. And the chorus channel is routed to the phaser channel, that's routed to the filter channel, that's routed to the redux channel, and then the redux channel goes to the group channel, and the group channel goes to the master art channel. So with these dummy clips, we can do parameter automation. So if I play the square wave, let's give it a bit of phaser. And if I go a bit, you'll see how these dummy clips actually have automation in them. So it, this is actually changing the frequency of the phaser to 222 hertz, a lot. So it's changed the phaser to 771, and then we've got to sweep up. And because all of these are routed into each other, that means we can do a combination of them. So. But I'm just going to hit none for now. Now if we go over to this mini clip to any clip slot trigger, you'll see that I've assigned all of these here to uh, all of these um, 20 dummy clips here. So I have C2 to G2, C1 to G1, C0 to G0, and C1 to G1. And then you can see it's on the chorus track, on the phaser track, on the filter track, and on the redux track. So that means if we move over to my MIDI keyboard over here, and hit play. So I can actually use my keyboard to play dummy clips, which are kind of presets of, uh, of, of various different effects. So let's put a bit of a tune, a bit more of a melody in. And a, we'll put in a beat. And one other thing is I've got some buttons here assigned to actually start recording clips within the MIDI deck to uh, clip slot trigger track. So I can actually hit record, start playing on my keyboard, and, we'll, and, and it, will, it will record the MIDI notes, and then I can play those back as a loop, and it will keep playing the dummy clips in the order that I played them in. So let's hopefully make something cool. Now you'll see that now I've started playing this MIDI clip again, it's recorded all of the movements that I made, all of the keys that I pressed. So it's basically recorded this sequence here. Let's do another one.
So this is really, really good for like if you're playing live or um, if you just want to make like some crazy bass machine that has like a whole series of different audio effects um, where you can use a keyboard or use a, an external device to quickly jam out different ideas, different kind of uh, effects on those um, on that bass line that you've currently got. And then of course you, you can record them or you could enter these in manually and you could have these stocked up for, for your live set when you know there's a particular cool thing and you want to trigger one of these. And trigger, and, and trigger a whole bunch of uh, different effects. So, it's a bit of a weird plugin. It's really handy for me, I love this kind of shit. Um, very utility based, and uh, yeah, hopefully some of you will get something out of it, or find a very unique way to use it. So, thanks for watching, I'm Tom Gossam. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, this is free.